Hi, Helen Briel here, talking about silk screens. Silk screens are very versatile. They can be applied to various surfaces using a number of mediums, but for this demo, I will be showing you how I use a silk screen on polymer clay using acrylic paint. As well, I'll give you three ideas to further enhance your silk screened clay sheet. Start by conditioning and rolling out your clay to the desired thickness for your project. For this demo, I'll be using white Kato clay, two shades of blue thick body paint, and my postcard from Bali design silkscreen. You will also need a squeegee or an old credit card and a container of cool water. Lightly burnish the silkscreen onto your clay to ensure you have a good connection. For this example, I am using two colors of paint. Intersperse the colors on your squeegee or credit card. Then simply run the squeegee at a 45 degree angle, lightly down over the pattern you want to capture. Use a relatively light touch. You don't need very much pressure for this. If you are using a pink Helen Briel design silk screen, you can use either side of the silk screen when applying the paint. This has the bonus of allowing you to create mirror images of patterns by using both sides. As soon as you are done, carefully remove your silk screen and immediately immerse it in a container of cool water. It is important the paint does not dry on the screen and clog the openings. The next task is to walk your container of water with the silk screen over to a sink and rub and rinse it gently, ensuring all the paint has been removed. If you do find that you get some paint dried on the silk screen or have other issues, please see the silk screen use instructions page on my website for written directions and troubleshooting solutions. I like to use this wire shelf for drying the silk screen. A sweater drying rack or a towel also works. Let the paint on your pattern sheet dry fully. It should be dry in about 10 minutes. If it isn't dry in about 10 minutes, there is most likely an issue with the clay or possibly the paint. I'll talk more about that shortly. And that's the basics of silk screening. Very quick, easy and fun. Here is another example of a silk screened sheet using two colors of paint, gold and copper. And here is some jewelry made from this sheet. Generally, I like a matte or satin surface with my silk screen work but I also like the high gloss look I've used here on these components. Here are a few scraps I had left over from a project using the same classic, but I think very striking gold and copper on black combination. Now that we've covered some fun stuff, let's back up and talk a little bit more in detail about the type of paint and the type of clay you need in order to silk screen successfully with polymer clay. Excessive plasticizers in polymer clay can cause acrylic paint to remain sticky and not dry properly. The plasticizers are what makes the clay soft, so the softer the clay, the more likely this will be an issue. This is why I use and recommend Kato clay, which is generally the least soft clay of the major brands. If you want to use other clays, I suggest leaching the clay. If your paint is not dry to the touch, in about 10 minutes after silk screening, it is not going to dry properly. And waiting longer actually makes the situation worse with the paint continuing to react with the plasticizers. I suggest getting your project completed and into the oven as soon as you can in order to stop this process. In most cases, curing the item will solve the sticky paint problem. Here are two simple acrylic paint qualities to look for. You want a thick bodied paint if the paint is thin and runny, you have a much easier chance of smearing your pattern. And two, you need a polymer clay compatible paint. Some of the fabric or dimensional paints I have found remain sticky to the touch even after coming out of the oven. I have found most acrylic paints do work with this technique, but do some research and testing to be sure. And keep in mind that non-drying paint may be a clay issue, not a paint issue. Here are some brands of paint I have used successfully for silk screening. If you have a number of thin paints you'd like to use, consider buying a thickening gel that you can mix with them. I have this one from Liquitex. 
but I'm sure other brands exist. Okay, back to the fun stuff. To add some additional interest to your sheet, here are three ideas you can try. Add mica powders, pastel chalks, or pan pastels to add interest to the background. Add a fine texture to your sheet. Or three, enlarge the pattern using your pasta machine. For the first idea, I'll illustrate adding pan pastels to my now dried, but not cured, silk screened clay sheet. I usually like to start with an overall layer of a pale color. I'm using the soft, spelled S-O-F-F-T, applicator that is sold with pan pastels, which I highly recommend. This applicator can also be used for mica powders and pastel chalks. Clean the applicator on a paper towel between colors. Now I begin layering other colors on randomly. I'm winging it here, trying out different colors as I go. One of the things I love about pan pastels is that you can layer the colors, something you can't do with mica powders. Pan pastels come in a wide variety of colors. Most of them are matte, like the ones you are seeing here, but there are also a few metallic ones that are very similar to mica powders. This turquoise I'm using here is probably my favorite color. I find myself reaching for it time and time again. And here are some tiles I made from this sheet. When your paint remains sticky and doesn't dry properly and you do this technique of applying pan pastels or mica powders, this is the result. The orange pan pastels stick to the pale yellow paint and you lose your contrast. It can still be a pretty look, but not necessarily what you wanted or expected. I find I even have to leach white Cato clay as it is quite soft. I did not leach in this case. You can use this same technique I've used with the pan pastels with mica powders or soft pastel chalks. Pan pastels are also great to use for creating a blended border effect. Here is an uncured silkscreen pendant. If you want to add gold to the edges, the applicator makes this very easy. If you want to carry that color onto the front of the piece, just hold the applicator at a slight angle to deposit the color on the front edge. If you want to carry the color even further onto the front, tap lightly around the edges to get a soft blended effect. Here are some other examples where I've created a shaded border effect. On to idea number two, to enhance your silkscreen sheet. If you like a fabric-like effect or want a more matte look to your sheet, consider applying a fine, subtle texture. Here is a favorite of mine, shiny organza. I like the effect of this heavier fabric as well. Use your favorite burnishing tool to impress the fabric's texture into the clay. I'm using a bone folder here. You can also put the clay sheet together with your fabric through the pasta machine to get a good impression. Here are three examples done with the organza texture. And the final idea you can play with is to enlarge your pattern by rolling it through the pasta machine at thinner settings. You can create some interesting abstract effects, and if you use an acrylic paint that happens to crackle, that's a bonus. In this example, I've combined ideas two and three. I've used the organza texture with the silkscreen sheet in the pasta machine, which both enlarges the pattern as well as adds texture. Here I was experimenting some more with textures, wanting to create a more organic and abstract effect. Once you've cured your piece, I recommend you seal it for protection. Here are my current favorites. I hope I've inspired you to try silk screening. Whether your style is graphic and contemporary or earthy and organic, there are many directions you can take in achieving your creative goals using silk screens as a starting point.